Uzbekistan and Tajikistan, two countries in Central Asia deemed mysterious by many, are slowly opening up to more international tourists. The best way to get to know them is by train, a romantic and leisurely way to both witness the landscape and interact with the locals. In this video, I get a ticket for a bed in a third-class cabin. Lasting 18 hours, this overnight train takes me from Tashkent in Uzbekistan to Dushanbe in Tajikistan. This train line has been closed since the collapse of the Soviet Union and only reopened in 2022. Join me as I try to capture my longest train journey yet, attempting to film an anxious border crossing in a country where filming can still feel restricted. No, no, they're poor, they're poor. Where's the camera? Camera, camera, camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello, good morning. Well, Good afternoon from Tashkent. I am actually standing in front of a train to Dushanbe that I will be taking overnight for 18 hours journey. So I purchased the ticket just now at the ticketing office. So interestingly, I couldn't purchase it online because generally with a train in Uzbekistan, you can purchase it online. But this one, I think you have to get to the ticketing counter and pay it in person. So if you can see the train, it looks pretty brand new. It says Dushanbe Tashken. Well, That's me, number four. Yeah, number four. Which one is my bed? I don't know. Ah, there. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It's a bit stuffy. <laughs> but first step. I got my bed for the night already. Uh, Anissa? Shifa. Uh, Shifa. And there you are. Oh. Indonesia, uh, Indonesia, Malaysia, oh. Singapore, Philippines. Indonesia. Akea. Asian. Yes, Asian. Akea. You uh, won't let my die, mother. Oh. Oh, you mean uh, I'm older? Oh. Younger than you? One year? You one for you. Oh, I'm younger than wow. you. One year younger. Wow. Oh. <laughs> so I think it's just like in this part of the world, this region, Central Asia, there are so many people that are still rather suspicious or skeptical when they see a camera. Just because I think for years and years things were closed and Probably it's hard to keep up with the, the new world, like vlogging and stuff like that. So there's always that suspicious feeling. But so far, this kind of probably fascination over <laughs> females who are traveling um, is already a nice welcome. So this is how the toilet looks like. As you can see, it's actually pretty clean right now. This is the third class, obviously. And so you are given this mattress as well as bed sheet. I've also got my travel friend here that I met just now. <laughs> We're moving. The train journey covered almost a thousand kilometer along the Central Asia region, famously known for its historical Silk Road. Railway network in this region is basically an inheritance from the Soviet Union era. I couldn't help but think about the ancient traders and travelers that traversed this land for over a thousand years. Mac here, she is actually a Taiwanese traveler 
and solo traveling and we have just been discussing about the border crossing between all of these countries interestingly enough because of the difficult political relations between all of this not all borders are open so yeah i think if you are traveling to central asia the only suggestion i could make is that try to have as much time possible so there are over probably 50 60 bed i'm not so sure but what's beautiful is they have this rug <laughs> which i haven't seen on other train but the third class or plot cards have this bed over here and you can have seating situation and there are two beds the upper and the lower bed and this is how you store your stuff that's my luggage and my equipment bag i personally think that the third class has more open space because in my previous experiences the second class could be a bit claustrophobic and stuffy <laughs> The train took me from the capital Tashkent in Uzbekistan further south towards Samarkand, past by lesser known cities such as Jizakh and Karshi along the Hisa Mountains. Although I was apprehensive choosing third class for my longest ever train journey, I truly appreciated the open cabin. Without doors, you can feel much more connected to other people on the train as there are fewer barriers to interactions. Being on a long distance train journey is a meditative and introspective experience. It gives you the space to be still with hours of nothing but the gentle rocking of the train and the passing scenery outside. Where in um, Tajikistan are you from? Dushanbe. Dushanbe. Oh. I live um, north of um, uh, the Vogsal. Vogsal? Oh, okay. Good. So, work very nearby. Work, home, work, home. <laughs> the internet so slowly. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so. Uzbekistan internet so bad. Well, Tajikistan is too bad. <laughs> <laughs> Even worse. Tajikistan internet. Okay. Don't bite. Yeah, okay. Don't bite. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's been two and a half hours since we departed from Tashkent, and I'm just enjoying the view even more right now because the sun is setting and you can sort of see the mountains. And you see the flat land and some of the mountains as the background. There is a snow capped mountain over there, slightly too far away for you to see probably. saying hi to us <laughs> so anyway so um mac is sharing what she's got she got bread she's got some walnuts and 
apricot. Peach. peach. Oh, peach. Oh, yeah. Some dried peach. <laughs> so cute. <laughs> Probably this is drinking water. We've got so many hours left and we don't know what to do. We're like, <laughs> what else can we do on this train? Apart from sitting and eating and chatting. Obviously the language barriers are quite high. What's interesting is that as a female, if you're traveling alone, the questions they would ask if you're married, if you've got children, how old are you first? And then they will ask if, if I said no children, they will ask, they will ask like why, why no children? <laughs> so yeah, obviously yeah, you just have to be comfortable with that kind of questions. So we've just arrived at Samarkand train station, and I think we'll be stopping for 40 minutes. It's so nice to get fresh air. <laughs> Mac is hunting some water. What else are you going to buy? Water and uh, food. And, and food uh, and extra food. Oh, noodles, yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we'll get the same thing. It's 10,000. Yeah, well, they need money. <laughs> that's so, as you can see, this is the locomotive, the front part. Second class, I think, uh, at the very end here. Do you want to see? Yes. From your nose? Yeah, let's go. I'll show you. I think third class is better, but Max said that it's too hot. <laughs> Do you see? <laughs> so you've got door, it's the same four bed, but it's like closed like that. Put your camera there. Yes, I will. So it's 9 30, and we were told that turns out the border crossing will happen tomorrow morning at 6, and we'll just have to sleep. <laughs> As you can see, we have made an impromptu door by making a curtain from one of our sheets. So we are protected. Now, ready for bed. good morning it's half six so um, we were told that the Uzbekistan border will happen in about five minutes from now thankfully we don't have to get off the train and the immigration officer will come up and stamp one of each of passport individually I just think like taking transportation like this especially train it's it, it such a fascinating way to see the geography <laughs> so yeah but I didn't sleep very well I think because 
the light was just not dim enough or was not completely off and the bed is quite short short for my legs are you visa no i don't need visa deport 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 deportation no indonesia i don't need a visa indonesia no visa no only 30 days okay yeah visa three days <laughs> third, <laughs> whoa 30 okay. online her online visa is for 60 days oh hey you the pamir oh harasho oh good pamir yeah. ah. <laughs> how can you go make niki afghan <laughs> so he's, he's basically saying that in Pamir there are lots of mountains and lots of animals and also close to the border of Afghanistan. So be careful because they will catch you and then <laughs> put you in Afghanistan <laughs> and no more time. But women in Chimeshai, Taliban. Hello. No, no, visa, no, no, deport, 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 <laughs> deport. No. Money, money, man, no. Migration. Okay. Deport, deport. He really wants us to be deport, deport. <laughs> Perhaps because we didn't buy any tea from him. <laughs> <laughs> so weird. So this is migration card. You need to fill the form, surname, given name, date of birth, purpose of travel, host person or company, number of passport, duration of stay, arrival and departure. So Indonesia, Indonesia Taiwan. Taiwan. Adriana. Good morning. 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 <laughs> that was funny. The immigration officer a bit like comical, so that's why. Mm. Yeah, I so really want to speak Russian. English king yet Ruski Pashasta. Yeah, pros the Pangis can is now Pasko my grass. Camera, no? Mm. We were given plov, which is similar to Uzbek food, like I think a very common staple in Central Asia. It's been two hours probably waiting for the border control to finish. We have got our passport back. Uh, we got our phone checked. Mine twice. They, they look through Photos, I think, right? Yeah, yeah just photos. photos. It felt very invasive because obviously, like, this is all personal stuff. So, yeah, he zoom in, oh, zoom oh, out. Oh. It's like phew, so weird. Only uh, us. Yeah, I think only only the foreigners. Mm, the local doesn't get that kind of check. And um, there's also a lady checking a small bag of us. Um, just trying to rim through rim through things and trying to find something. Just this is this feels a bit like 90s type of border crossing.
We've arrived in Dushanbe. Uh-huh. Спасибо. Ciao. <laughs> Friends for over 18 hours. I think we need to get stamped first. We passed the immigration, which is, it was very interesting because I don't think the immigration officer know the updated system that many of us don't need a visa, even a max visa, which is something that she paid quite a lot and waited for a month, was not checked. Look at this bazaar on the street. What's that? I don't know. I don't think that's your good. So cool. Just arrived at my hostel. <laughs> this is my bed. The hostel has some beautiful chandelier. Can you imagine that? So fancy. Very happy with the hostel choice, although it's slightly out of the way, but this is so cozy. I'm sure I can sleep perfectly tonight. Initially, I was booking a dorm bed shared with eight other people including breakfast however there was a guy that said if you snow you stay there if you don't snow it's better to stay here which is the six bed shared in a room so i said no i don't snow <laughs> that's quite funny it was a beautiful journey interesting journey to take but very happy to undertake such train overnight train lovely experience well thank you so much for watching today's episode i hope you enjoyed watching the journey it was an interesting experience um, especially with the uzbek border crossing side where they checked my phone which felt pretty invasive but i hope you get a sense of this and uh, would be interested to know would you actually try traveling alone or just traveling to any countries in central asia region I am excited because the next video will be from Dushanbe, the capital city of Tajikistan and probably one of the least visited countries country in Central Asia. Let me know again what you think down in the comment section below. I love reading your comments. Don't forget to check out my Patreon and my other social media. I can't wait to see you again on the next video. Bye!